May 12. Saint Epiphanius, Bishop of Cyprus. He was born a Jew, but seeing the power of the Christian faith, was baptized together with his sister, Calithropi. He became a monk at the age of 26 in the monastery of Saint Hilario. He later founded a monastery of his own and became famed throughout Palestine and Egypt for his asceticism, his spiritual wisdom and the wonders he worked. Fleeing the praises of men, he went off to Egypt. On the way, he met Paphnutius the Great, who prophesied that he would be a hierarch on the island of Cyprus. And indeed, many years later, by God's providence, Epiphanius came to Cyprus, where he was unexpectedly chosen as bishop. He became bishop of the town of Salamis at the age of 50 and governed the Church of God for 36 years. In all, he lived nearly 90 years on this earth and attended into rest from his life to life eternal in the kingdom of Christ. Before his death, he was invited to Constantinople by the Emperor Arcadius and his wife Eudoxia for the Council of Bishops which was forced at the desire of the Emperor and Empress to condemn St. John Chrysostom. Arriving in Constantinople, he came to the Emperor's court, where the Emperor and Empress talked with him at a great length, endeavoring to make him declare against Chrysostom. The citizens and Chrysostom heard that Epiphanius had agreed with the Emperor against him. Chrysostom therefore wrote him a letter, My brother Epiphanius, I hear that you have advised the Emperor that I should be banished. Know that you will never again see your episcopal throne. To this Epiphanius wrote in return, John, my suffering brother, we stand insults, but know that you will not reach the place to which you are exiled. And these two prophecies of the two saints soon came about. Refusing to agree with the emperor on the exile of Chrysostom, Epiphanius took ship and set off for Cyprus but died on the voyage. The emperor sent Chrysostom into exile in Armenia, but the saint died on the road. Saint Epiphanius entered into rest in the year 403. Of his many writings, the best known is this medicine chest, in Greek, in which he explains and refutes eight heresies. Saint Germanus, Patriarch of Constantinople he was the son of the head of the imperial senate, who was killed by the emperor Constantine Pogonatus. The same wicked emperor castrated the senator's son, this Germanus, and drove him by force into a monastery. As a monk, Germanus shone like a star by his life of good works. Because of this he was chosen first as bishop of Sisychus, and then when Anastasius II became emperor in 715 as Patriarch of Constantinople. As Patriarch, he baptized the infamous Copronymus, who, at the time of his baptism, fouled the water with filth, and the Patriarch prophesied that, when he became emperor, he would bring some foul heresy into the church, and this came to pass. When Copronymus became emperor, he restored the iconoclast heresy. Leo Second, the Isaurian, Copronymus' father, began the persecution of icons and, when Patriarch Germanus opposed him, the furious Leo cried, I am emperor and priest, then deposed Germanus from his throne and sent him into exile to a monastery, where the saints spent ten further years until God called him to himself in the kingdom of heaven in 740. The holy martyr Pancras. He came from Phrygia to Rome, where as a boy of 14 he was martyred for Christ in 304. This saint is much revered in the West. There is a church in Rome dedicated to his name and his holy relics are preserved there. Reflection Saint Clement of Alexandria tells of a horrible custom among the barbarians. 
he says that when they capture their enemy, they lie him alive to the corpse of a dead man and leave them both alone that the living and dead decay together. If only it could be said, thank God that this barbarian custom is past. In essence, it has not passed, rather it reigns today in full force. Everyone who ties their living spirit to the flesh, deadened by barbarian passions, is the same as the one who ties a living man to a corpse and leaves them both to decay. Contemplation To contemplate the action of the Holy Spirit on the Apostles, how from fishers of fish he makes them fishermen of men for the kingdom of God, how from shepherds of the irrational flock he makes them shepherds of the rational flock. Homily About how men in prosperity do not listen to the law of God. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not hear. Jeremiah 22:21. The Lord of hosts raised this complaint against Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, and against the people of Judea. Are not these words in effect even today, when they are spoken in the face of our people and almost with few exceptions to every one of us individually? When we feel ourselves prosperous, we leave God in the shadows and we render his words to oblivion, but as soon as misfortune encompasses us with its dark wings, we turn to God and cry out to him for help. In misfortune, the commandments of God seem to us as sweet as honey, but in prosperity, they seem as bitter as medicine. Is not then misfortune better than prosperity? Is not misfortune more salvic in which we seek God than prosperity in which we forget God? O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah 22, 29 cries out the true prophet of God. Man is the earth. The word of the Lord is life planted into that earth. Will the earth prefer to remain without the living crops and be cursed or will it nurse the crops entrusted to it and be blessed? Oh, how ugly is the bare ravine and the barren field and how beautiful is the cultivated field covered with rich crops. O oh man, you are the one and the other field. Choose, death or life. Not one household values the field at all if it does not bear any fruit or crop on it. Will God then be less intelligent than an ordinary householder and give some value to the field that fails to bear fruit from every seed that is sown on it? What will become of man who in his prosperity does not listen the words of God? And he shall be buried with the burial of an ass. Jeremiah 22.19 Thus spoke the prophet to King Jehoiakim, and his word was realized. When the Chaldeans captured Jerusalem, they killed Jeho- Jehoiakim. They dragged his body beyond the gates of the city and left it to the dogs. And that which happens to the asses, so it was with the unheeding king. O men, O earth, hear in time the word of the Lord, that the anger of the householder does not pour out on you as on a barren field, and that your end not be as the end of an ass. O long-suffering Lord, save us from the stoniness of heart and darkness of mind, from those two bitter diseases, the miserable consequences of those hours of life which men call prosperous. Save and have mercy on us, the Lord of hosts. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen.